Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, welcome to tonight's Division C GG League's matchup here between the Pink Bananas and I believe it's insert team name here. We got some quite creative names here tonight. Uh, on uh, Doing some color for you tonight, it is me, your boy CJ, alongside with me tonight. Doing play-by-play -play is Art. How are you doing tonight? I'm doing pretty good tonight. How are you doing, CJ? You know, it's been a long day, but excited to cast some League here tonight. Absolutely. Interesting bands coming out already. Uh, that Anivia, I remember casting that a little while ago and absolutely destroyed uh, in another league I was casting recently. The Draven, another interesting band to see coming. Um, do you think that Pink Banana here is fearing that bot lane a little bit, or is uh, Hands of Mind I mean, just that kind of Draven? They they definitely could. Draven's a very significant lane bully, especially if he gets that early lead, he could be terrifying going into the late game, but... Uh, if you don't respect that uh, Draven play early in the uh, first five or so minutes of the game, he can seriously make it uh, really hard for you to come back into the game. So it could just be a respect thing, could be just a prevention of possibly counterpicking with the Draven, even though it might not be in the top of this champ pool, but it's a go-to ban for me. <laughs> Fair enough. Now that Mordekaiser is my go-to ban right now. Um absolutely does fairly well in the lane there with uh, the clear but it doesn't matter if he does well in lane he just comes back out of lane and does team fight stuff because Mordekaiser oh no for sure he's definitely one of those champs where it's a uh, thing nice thing we like to call the QSS tax where uh, you want to try and get that quicksilver stash as fast as you can uh, or it doesn't limit your build so when you go to that shadow realm you're not uh, well you know hung out to dry too bad a very early Twisted Fate pickup here. There are a lot of very good counters that you could pick into the Twisted Fate here. Um, and almost definitely going mid. I know that there have been a number of attempts at playing him as an AD carry, or even as a, a hybrid carry. Um, do you think Gwinsos is, is strong enough to really make that matter? Gwinsos and um, Stinger? Um, I mean, the uh, I've seen that like on-hit TF build. It kind of varies with the success rate. It has a really good amount of DPS, but I mean that instant burst that the traditional AP build has um, hasn't been seen as much as this on hit or the AD, the Triforce Rapid Fire Cannon build we've also been seeing recently. So it could kind of be flexed anywhere, but I'm definitely uh, agreeing with you. I'm going to see him here in the mid lane. Yeah, and like I said, there's definitely there's some really good counter picks you can go here. The Yasuo is really good in Twisted Fate, um, which will have really good team fight potential as well, especially with that Rakan here. Um, pick up a Gragas for the jungle, although it looks like this Mordekaiser is going to the jungle based on the fact that Boom Boom uh, was the first to pick up as well. I'm definitely going to be that mid-twisted fate now that the Sivir has been picked up. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. I'm looking for the second uh, band face here. Probably going to take out the... Uh, this Mordekaiser, I have seen him in all three of these lanes here. I've seen him in the top mid, also the jungle. We do see Boom Boom with the smite here, but uh, could definitely be flexed around the map, but these bands are probably going to be looking to be targeting the top and mid here. Absolutely. It's unfortunate here uh, for insert team name here that they banned off that Tom Kench, who would have been really good to pick up with the Sivir and the Twisted Fate as well to go against that Rakan Zaya. Yeah, he definitely would have been able to uh, gobble up that Squishy to uh, eliminate that hard engage by the uh, Rakan there. But uh, seeing that Yumi ban kind of come out, Yumi Sivir's a very, very... Uh, Strong lane, quick wave clear, free poke, and a lot, a lot of sustain. It does have that, absolutely. Now, Yumi does suffer against somebody like Rakan, who can go in and do a lot of engage potential very quickly, too. Um, I feel like the Rakan is almost already a counter pick to the, the Yumi. Uh, and we do see that Yasuo ban coming out, like I mentioned. Very good counter pick into Twisted Fate. Very, very true. So maybe looking for... They've gone... Uh... Support ban here at the Yumi. Could they maybe be taking away one more to... Oh, the Karma. She is very, very strong right now in that bottom lane with the, the Mantra Q without nearly any items doing a ton of damage. Yeah, we are on patch 913, so we are not likely to suspect it to be a Karma top. We have seen plenty of nerfs uh, targeted towards that position for the Karma. And now Lee Sin coming out, leaving uh, their support pick for last here is Team Insert Name here. I think they're definitely, uh, for for the team insert name, oh, we got a Nunu and an Azir. It's been a while since I know, me personally, I've seen an Azir being played out here, I don't know about you, Art. 
Uh, Azir is actually one of my favorite champions, um, personally. I don't get to play him a lot anymore since I've moved out of the mid lane. Uh, and to Twisted Fae, not necessarily the, the kind of pick that I'd want. I would be leaning more towards the Akali, the LeBlanc, somebody who has that assassination potential on the Twisted Fae, even a Zed. Um, but no, the Azir definitely has brings a lot to the table here. Uh, the Nunu for the, the lockdown, the Mordekaiser and Azir going in, that's a lot of damage over time. Uh, but they are going to have to be very, very afraid of this burst that Nautilus and Twisted Fate are going to be able to provide them, as well as the follow-up damage that Sivir and Fiora in particular can provide. You are very, very right here, but uh, looking to kind of see these comps possibly round out, and uh, both look very, very strong. I mean, we do have the the hard engagement from the Nautilus all-in follow-up with the, the Sivir ult and the possible Lee Sin Insect. And on the other side of the table, we got the hard, hard engage between the Rakan and the Nunu, followed up by whatever damage can come from the remaining three carries. So I think Absolutely. we're going to have an interesting game on us. All right, we definitely tonight. do. And Twisted Fate with the teleport as well as the ultimate. It's going to be a lot of global presence as well. Almost would have wished to see him take the Ignite here just so that we could have seen that better uh, pick potential and be able to reduce the healing that's going to come from Nunu, Mordekaiser, and Zaya once she gets a couple of items. You're you're very very true there, but uh, but yeah, we saw that Sivir switch over to the heal. She did opt out of the teleport. Um, but yeah, this is gonna be a pretty even game, I think, around the board. Leeson's gonna look to maybe pressure the map early in the game, get his uh, lanes rolling, and try and snowball. Because if Sivir's power spikes at those three items as well as Zion, I think the longer this game goes, it could kind of uh, go either way. Absolutely, there's a lot of staying power with both of these team compositions, and a lot of tower pressure as well. That being said, we're just going to go take a quick break while we get that into the game here. We will see you in just a few minutes.
Welcome back everyone to Pink Bananas versus insert team name here. We've just loaded onto the rift and everybody's gonna be making their way out of the uh, gates and right now it looks like insert team name here is defending for a potential uh, invade here on the bot side. What are your thoughts here CJ? The level ones here lining up against these two teams here. I mean... Red side's level one is significantly stronger than the other team here, so if anyone gets caught... Oh, it looks like we're gonna get nothing here, but between the Nautilus, the TF, Siever with that tempo and the Lee Sin, there's a lot of instant burst on that uh, single target damage, but uh, nothing uh, looking like we're gonna get nothing out of this. Unfortunate as well, especially with the spread that we saw there coming in from Pink Banana. A lot of opportunity there for them to be able to get that pick off. Yeah, they'll have, they'll have to disengage more to kind of peel away from that. They really don't have much of a engage level one unless possibly Rakan with that W or... But other than that, they just hard lose level one. So it's smart of them to kind of back off, play their spots, and not uh, try and get too freaky with it or this early in the game. Absolutely. We're going to see a very uh, standard start here across the board. Um... A little bit surprised actually to not see Fiora try to take lane control right away. Um, definitely one of my preferred things to do, especially on a lane that I feel confident in, like Fiora into a Mordekaiser should. Uh, just walk right up there and tell him, nope, you're not going to get your first three minions because <laughs> I don't want you to. Exactly, exactly. She can definitely uh, take control of that top lane on top of this Mordekaiser and uh, make it very hard for him, but uh, if he gets the opportunity to continue to free farm, it could... Uh, turn tides but we'll see as things kind of pan out here around the map absolutely there we go sorry i was just adjusting the score line so everybody was in the correct positions and uh client is continuing to be buggy oh i'm gonna see a little bit of trade there on the bot lane did not quite land the nautilus stun there though onto the recon quite unfortunate would have been able to be a lot of damage i think this guy recon is definitely gonna look for the counter engage on the bot side to prevent the Nautilus Siver all in because an all in for them pre sixes very uh, can go very sideways very very fast if certain things miss or just don't go as planned. Oh, that's gonna be a gank here level one or level two here rather. The ignite's going on to Siver. That's a bunch of damage going on to her, but it's gonna get out alive and be able to return a decent amount onto uh, the Rakan. Not gonna get the kill either way though. Uh, and flash expended from the AD carry on bot side for insert team name here. Yep, but this Nunu will be punished for only going red into his chicken, so they know he's on his uh, blue buff here, but it's going to be a free taken. I don't know why this Nunu thinks he can go take his yeah, other no. side of the map. Lee Sin has already full cleared his blue side. Absolutely nothing there for Nunu to grab. Uh, it's going to be Lee Sin managing to get a fair amount there on that jungle there. And as we can see, he's sitting top side here right now. Not going to be able to get much done, though, it looks like. Fiora doing a wonderful job of pushing Mordekaiser underneath the tower. Yeah, if I was that Lee Sin there, I'd continue to clear out his bot side, knowing that he walked into his blue side jungle, and then rotate into his top side and just snowball the lead. <laughs> Snowball a lead over the Nunu. Absolutely. But... Oh, we already see a gang coming in into the bot into the mid lane here from Rakan as well as the Nunu. That's probably going to be a flash. It's going to be the jump, and there's the flash. Going to be the bubble managing to hit. Stun coming out from the uh, mid laner there, but nothing going to come from it other than the burnt flash. And yeah. we can see bot side lots of zoning off on the Zaya there. Yeah, if your Rakan's going to leave you and stuff like that, especially in a Sivir Nautilus, the Zaya has to respect the. Uh... The terror of the Nautilus Q. Oh, that's going to be a good gauge back on the top side. Uh, it's turned around, though, and uh, not much going to come from it. Nope, so we're kind of seeing some uh, even score around the map. A little bit of differential between the Lee Sin and the Nunu because he was able to get that top side away from the Nunu with the early level 2 gank on the bot side of the map. Oh, top side here we see the Lee Sin around. Fiora is very low though as well. It's going to be the ward hop, going to be the pull. Miss is nothing going to come from this gank here. Oh, that never mind. It's going to be Fiora going in anyways. Going to take a lot of damage. That's her brought very, very low. The repost and the parry, that's going to be able to get it. Going to be able to just keep her alive. Q 
Two landing from Lee Xian, but no follow-up here from the Fiora. That's gonna be Lee Xian going in, but the ball's coming in from Nuno here. That's gonna be a potential. Are we gonna see anything come from it? No, the ball's gonna go behind the tower and miss everybody. But this is gonna be Fiora forced to back. Absolutely no way for her to go in. Potential turret dive we could see coming from Mordekaiser. Uh, not with the Nuno at level 3, unfortunately. So Lee Xian's just gonna be here to have to push off the minions. Not being able to do a great job of that, however. Uh, it's gonna be a turret fight going over to the Nuno as well as the Mordekaiser, their top side. So yeah, this Nuno's definitely being able to adapt around the map, be where this Lee Sin is trying to be, and take away that bit of a lead he had earlier. We can see the level difference between the Nunu and the Lee Sin, but uh, Lee Sin needs to try, and in my opinion, to get noticed a little more around the map, try and make some things happen, use that uh, early advantage that he has as a jungler. Absolutely. What are your thoughts on the top lane? Uh, I know we had mentioned it during the off screen that Fiora should have a relatively easy time in this lane into the Mordekaiser. Uh, I think it could definitely be a skill matchup go both ways. I think Fiora's high mobility, especially when she gets that tier map, can compete with the Mordekaiser wave clear and uh, really start leaning into him a little more. Uh, but she's just got to accept those, uh, make good quick trades, uh, repost what she can to avoid the heavy burst damage and just continue to win those trades over and over and then she'll slowly win her lane. Absolutely. I mean, you see bot lane for getting a big wave here. He's going to let Xyrocon come back. Nuni's going around clearing out her jungle some more. Still a lot in the top lane. Decent wave being built up here for Fiora. She's definitely able to uh, control the wave, but she is down in that XP department quite a bit to this Mordekaiser. She has a... <clears throat> a good wave that she pushed in and is still down in the XP department to the Mord, and she's yet to hit level 6. Even though the, uh, the CS is still pretty even. Uh, getting level 6 right there on that wave. That's going to be the pull pulling around. She manages to get behind to get that the weak spot. She's going to get the repulse. Decent damage going in. The ultimate coming in from the Fiora. That's going to be a lot of damage. Potential flash as well. That's going to be uh, neither ultimate being uh, propped here. Uh, the repost was actually on the ultimate there from the Mordekaiser, uh, is what we saw there. But, uh, but yeah, we can see that uh, the all-in on both sides is uh, able to kind of go fairly even so far. Mordekaiser only with the blasting one and the level one boots to the uh, double longsword boots on the Fiora, so still fairly even, but we're seeing a phage out of this TF mid, so we're definitely going to be seeing that ADTF build. Yeah. Uh, it'll be interesting as well to see top side here what's going on. Uh, Fiora's brought very low recall. Might see something come from it. It doesn't look like it. Giving a lot of respect to the Zyra Khan lane we can see in this bot here. That's uh, gonna be the dive in from Rakan. No level six yet for either side. That's gonna be the flash out, but at least Yen is here. Let's see if he can continue to move in. That's gonna be the Nunu coming in as well on the backside. Sivir's gonna continue to push damage in. That's gonna be a lot of going in, but not gonna be enough. We see them being pushed back now. Lee Sin's taking a bunch of damage. That's gonna be a flash from the Nunu to get close. That's the TF coming in with the ultimate as well. That's gonna be the stun not selected yet. TP coming in as well from blue side. That's gonna be Mordecai so being able to pull people in. Not gonna be able to get anyone though. That's gonna be a really good disengage here from Taim insert name here to get out with that one kill. Yep, they're definitely going to be able to take the kill, but I think they will lose the dragon here. The Nuna Mordekaiser are all going to be able to uh, melt this thing down, but Fiora has a big wave building up on her side. She is going to be able to shove that in the Mordekaiser without TP, and will be able to cash in a little bit on the uh, turret plating, so this mountain dragon could help them in the longer run. They didn't secure a kill. They spent a lot to uh, try and get that kill on the Nautilus. Even with the TP from the Mordekaiser, but we're just completely unsuccessful in those attempts. Absolutely. Uh, and we do see Azir managed to get the free lane here. I don't believe he got any turret plates, though, off of it either. Uh, potentially only the one. Yes, he only got the one turret plate off of uh, TF being out there as well. Um, looks like Fiora is getting two up in the top side. So a little bit of a trading up there as well for instant team name here. Mm -hmm. We're starting to see the 1.3-ish K gold differential favoring in this side of insert team name here. Um, CS still pretty close around the board. Looks like we got a Zerker's Grieve rush here on the Zero, maybe trying to rush that attack speed. Oh, decent trade in the, the jungle here over that Scuttle Crab. Gonna get a Nunu. Very difficult to steal uh, camps away from her with the bite and the smite. Very, very true. He is... Uh... Always have and always will be the instant secure on the Nunu. Between that chomp and the smite. 
Even though guys like St. Vicious back in the day still managed to screw it up. Yeah, it looks like we might be seeing something going up on the top lane. Yeah, that's going to be them going in. That's the go button with the Lee Shin here. It's going to be the pull in on Lee Shin against the Mordekaiser. Let's see what's going to keep happening up here. Lee Shin is just staying as far away as he possibly can. Nothing's going to come from it. Ultimate expended. Not, not true. That's going to be the ball coming in. The good riposte. That's going to be the Lee Shin kick onto the ultimate from the Fiora. That seems to be a little bit of a miscommunication. That's going to be the ultimate going off for Fiora. It's going to be a kill onto the Nunu. Uh, Q lands onto Lee, from Lee Shin onto the Mordekaiser. But he's going to be going in, pulled back unwillingly. And uh, potential here for a turret dive with these this two This should be a really characters. free dive here. Yeah. Uh, it does not look like they're comfortable, though, especially with the last of the minions being expended there. Uh, might be building another wave and trying again. No, it looks like we're just going to walk away here with that free kill. Well, I feel when Lee Sin landed that Q much earlier in the fight after they killed the Nunu, that uh, if he followed the Q there and they communicated together and Fiora went also... I think it could have been a very free double kill and possibly cash in on more platings, possibly get the turret very, very low, but um, possible missed opportunity. They just don't want to push it too hard and take what they can get. Absolutely, and sometimes that's the right way, the right call to make. Don't get too greedy. Potential, uh, if they miss plated, to give the double kill over the Mordekaiser, and that really sets the entire advantage they got in that top wave as well. So. Exactly. Sometimes just play it safe, take what you can, and move on with oh, life. That's going to be the Leeson landing the Q onto the Azir here. That's him going in. That's going to be the Q. That's going to be the barrier coming in from Azir. That's a lot of damage on the slow and the tower there. Exactly what we were talking about potentially happening in the top lane here. A big uh, dive potential there on the Leeson. He didn't have the uh, the kick active for the instant burst damage with the Electrocute. Uh, so he just tried going all in, but got the barrier and was did not quite have the damage to burn down that Azir and turns over a kill to the mid lane. Yeah, and we continue to see skirmishing in the top lane. Not going much of anywhere between the Mordecai and the Fiora. Uh, however, it looks like Mordecai is trying to interrupt Fiora's back. Um... I think this could possibly be a bait. If Mordecai tries to go in on this, then he just yeah dies. As you saw right there, that's going to be the Ignite, oh that's going to be the Repost, that's going to be enough to get the kill. Very confused on why he would turn back in, but nonetheless, without the TP, this turret's going to go very, very low, and this Fiora now 2-0, building a good CS lead, and she's got that Tiamat. Well, there's no and Son of Nuna going topside, that will be a top tower going down, absolutely. Fiora building that lead, and we're kind of seeing a gold lead start to get established here for insert team name here. Uh, across the board here, but uh, who are you favoring so far here? We're about uh, 12 and a half minutes into the game. Who are you favoring? Um, so far across the board, Insert Team Name here has been doing a phenomenal job. Um, as mentioned, that top tower going down here before Mordecai's got a chance to get there. The lack of rotation from Nunu is uh, very pivotal in that going down. Um, however, Rakan's rotations have been very important towards this mid lane, despite not getting a whole lot done. Um, Oh, this is going to be the attempt number two onto the uh, Twisted Fate here. He's going to manage to get both knockups. He's going to be the stun onto the Nunu under tower. That's going to be pretty big. Lots of damage going in. Not going to be enough. That is enough with Lee Sin going in as well. That's going to be the Ignite. Going to be the Lee, uh, Rakan getting the kill. But it's going to turn back. It's going to be a tower shot. Not quite enough to take down the Rakan. One for one there in the mid lane. Yeah, I do like that... Uh... We admire the Lee Sin going in for the kills, trying to apply as much pressure as he can. And what this does is not only the one-for-one -one trade in the mid lane, but it gives the Super Nautilus severe amount of pressures in the bot side. Yeah, now on top side, we see that uh, ultimate being used here. Did manage to go off onto the Fiora. It's going to be the ultimate return from the Fiora. That's three of them down already. That's very low health onto the... That's the kill coming in on top side. Till again on a killing spree. This Fiora now getting very, very strong. Has a full black cleaver on top of the Tiamat. And you compare that she to hurts. just the Blasting Wand for uh, the Mordekaiser. Very much ahead. It's going to be a very rough lane here for Mordekaiser, especially if the Aura can keep it out from under the tower there. But, uh... I do like the odds favoring here in Insert Team Name here. Fiora, once she gets this kind of lead, can sit in the side wave and... She's one of those champs that could 1v2 very, very easily. Absolutely, and there's not very many people who look like they can definitely uh, turn that around in the favor for um, the other, our opposing team here for Pink Bananas. 
Um, the Nunu and the Rakan definitely have some good potential, um, but I think the Azir and the Rakan are probably their best bet to be able to layer that CC with the consistent damage that Azir can provide. Uh, we've definitely seen that Mordekaiser is not cutting it right now. I mean, you see true. a Mountain Dragon fight coming in. That's going to be the jump in from the Rakan. The ultimate from Nautilus is going to be getting him, knocking him down very, very low. Not going to be enough to take him down. Nunu's going in. That's going to be Nautilus brought down first. Uh, going over to the Azir, that's Lee Sim brought in, going down as well. Azir putting out a bunch of damage here. We're going to see Twisted Fate trying to get that card. Not going to be able to get it in time to be able to turn that fight. And they're going to back off and give over the dragon to uh, Pink Banana here. So this is back-to-back -back dragons getting secured. They're taking these small victories they can here, but they did lose the first turn in the top lane. TF starting to apply a little more pressure mid. Not going to really get much. They're just going to get a free quick rotation. But I think... Uh... Insert team name here tried biting off a little more they could. They really didn't have everyone, it seems like, in a line ready to 100% commit to that fight. And uh, Pink Bananas is ready to jump on full force with that hard recon engage, followed up by the Nunu in this small area. And it just uh, started going sideways there for, for the insert team name here. Absolutely. Oh. In addition with the Azure on that confined space as well, we do see Boom Boom disconnecting. We are expecting a pause to be called here from either team. Um, if that does not happen, we will continue on as is. Um, yes. Uh, and we're going to see mid lane here, actually. It looks like they're going for that dive here with the Lee Sin and the Fiora. Uh, decide against it at the end. They are unsure where Mordekaiser is, and they don't want to have to deal with that in addition to the d potential of the dive. Um, and if I'm not mistaken, does the towers not still help Mordekaiser, even if you've been pulled through? No, uh, objectives still stay in play. You can't... Uh... Alright, well that's TF getting jumped on here. That's the ultimate there from Azir pushing the Fiora away. That's going to be them getting TF easily. That's going to be Mordekaiser pulling Fiora into his realm to fight 1v1. Not the choice he wanted to necessarily make. Azir would have been very useful here to help out. And that's going to be the Lee Sin managing to get the kill as soon as they exit that uh, 1v1 realm. Yep, that's... Uh... No, those, uh, the Shadow Realm does not eliminate objectives. Especially when it comes to turrets, otherwise that could be very unfair. A fed Mordekaiser could just ult somebody in Tower Dive for free and... There we go, the pause that we like were expecting for Boom Boom. Uh, for Boom Boom. Uh, the state for bot lane, something that uh, we touched on again during the intermission where uh, we were off camera. Um, there's a lot of respect being given out to this Rakan so far, I've been noticing, throughout the entire laning phase. What are your thoughts on that? I mean, once Rakan hits that 6 and he gets that all-in potential, even though they got... <laughs> He got a hard nerf, and even the people at the top level were uh, saying that he's as slow as a turtle, and all these things on top of it. The guy who basically reinvented uh, Rakan and won him a world title, Core JJ, was uh, even saying that uh, he still has the potential to severely do some damage with the hard and get initiation. And as we can see, that's what he's accomplishing here. They might have uh, surrendered a little bit in laning phase, especially with dying early there, but. Uh, that all in in a small area can be terrifying. Absolutely, and we did see it over there with the Azir on that dragon fight that got pushed back behind the blue buff on insert team name here's side. Um, Azir, especially on those close coders, manages to do a bunch of damage with those soldiers, and I believe he had three of them up at that point. Uh, this will be mid lane tower going down though, however, despite um, the pickoff onto the TF. This Azir is very, very strong, but we've yet to see him uh, complete an item. It looks like he might be going into that Seekers, holding on to the large rod. We're starting to see some first items come around from the rest of the map. Uh, Sivir's got to be very close to that Essence Reaver. We see it already out on Zaya. Uh, again, that huge Fiora is very, very strong. At least in the new, about the same point. I still think comp to comp wise, this is very favorable on the Pink Banana side. I. I'm a true believer of Team Fight Zaya. She's a pocket pick of mine. She's very underrated in the 5v5 situation because she can be very, very strong. And uh, synergized with the Rakan, one of the best 2v2 synergies when it comes to late game scaling. In the game, that's why they were designed for each other, mixed with the Nunu, and it can just be terrifying. Absolutely. Though that being said, as you mentioned earlier, the Fiora is not necessarily looking for those 5v5s. She's going to sit in that side wave and be like, come at me or I'm taking all your towers. That's going to be Nautilus caught out of position. The Flash immediately to get away. That's going to be the ultimate from the Rakan to try to pull him back in. Rooted up here by the Zaya. He's going to keep pushing. That's the ultimate from Nunu channel. Not going to be quite enough. Azir does not get there in time. There is still the potential for the tower dive here. 
Uh, we'll see if they decide to go for it or not. No, they back off with uh, only the two minions, though, to be able to get them into the tower. Yeah, I feel like that duck uh, was played pretty close to about as well as they can. Maybe a little better execution could have uh, turned the tide a little bit, but Nautilus is very, very tanky, and especially with the flash and the hook to get away. Can uh, run away for free at times. Absolutely. The Rift Herald, uh, unfortunately, we did not notice it getting taken down. Fiora just summoned it in the bot lane here. Uh, that shouldn't get a charge off, I wouldn't expect, here with the Zaya and the Rakan right here. Yeah, I know. You see Rakan already going for that eye, popping at once, but super, super low. Eyes up again, only at 600 health, and that's going to be it. Uh, Rift Herald, a bit of a waste here. Did pull everybody down, uh, however, so... Uh, advantage for the positioning. Lee Sin is sitting on a ward here, but he doesn't know. That's going to be the flash, and then the ultimate there from the Mordecai's are pulling him into the realm on his own. So that duel there is not being affected by anything else, which is why you see the Lee Sin standing there. He's going to be able to get, jump out, going to be able to pull in the uh, Mordecai's there with the dredge line, but they are just taking a lot of damage here under this tower. There's going to be Lee Sin going in, but does not have the jump to get back out. That's going to be a wonderful knockup coming in for the t side of uh, Team Instant Name here. Fiora is going to go and get the, uh, the Zaya, however, going to be able to pull Azir. Going to be the double kill. Azir going very big, getting two kills, three kills. Going to be the Rakan going down finally. Fiora is continuing to chase her, very close to getting the Nunu. Does get the Nunu. Is this going to be the Fiora going to continue? This is the flash from Azir. He's going to be able to do another kill onto the Azir. That is a four man for the Fiora with, uh, I believe, only the Rakan. Sorry, three man for the Fiora with Rakan and Nunu going down to the rest of her team. You know, I think that actually was the unofficial quadra. She did take out Zion in the back line and then flashed on top of the Mordekaiser and then proceeded to chase down the uh, Nunu and the Azir at the end. So, uh, yes, you are very, right. Very, very strong. This Fiora is able to get to that back line. I feel like they just didn't appreciate how truly strong she is and she made them pay the price especially with that fight there absolutely and that's gonna be the mountain drake finally going or not the mountain drake sorry that's the uh the cloud, cloud drake, drake going over to the side of insert team name here red car being hovered here by tf decent damage on the slow not quite as powerful as a gold card necessarily um <laughs> we do see shamrock continuing to push forward that's going to be the gold card. That's under the Rakan. That's a decent da amount of damage. That's the Shiver, and that's going to be the kill. Wow. Uh, Shamrock is not giving any courtesy there to the amount of damage that TF can put out. It was uh, very questionable in my Abs mind, but uh, you Absolutely. know, you live and you learn. You uh, die, you come back, and you do it all over again. Hopefully not all over again, uh, being caught in a position like that. Not what you want to be seeing at this point <laughs> in the game, without a doubt. Uh, almost 7,000 gold lean for insert team name here. Uh, it's going to be the Azir jumping out. Two soldiers under TF. That can be a lot of damage coming through. Uh, we do see the Zonia's Hourglass that were completed now for the uh, Azir. Yeah, we're definitely starting to see these items starting to round out and stuff like that across the map. Getting into those second item spikes. Got the Triforce and the Wits End on this TF. He's starting to become very, very strong. Oh, that's going to be Fiora caught out of position, but their team's there to follow up. That's going to be the ultimate from Rakan charming people up. It's going to be a lot of damage under Rakan. That's going to be Rakan not going down yet. Fiora... Uh, has been pulled out, it looks like, to go into the realm fighting Mordekaiser. Mordekaiser has decided that's not for him. He's going to go down. Azir managing to get away with that ultimate. But uh, in the backside there, we do see the Q landing from Lee Sin once more onto oh, the no. Azir. He did Don't manage do it. to kill uh, the Rakan as well, and that's the call for Baron. The Lee Syndrome nearly kicked in very, very hard. I know that... Baby was spamming that Q key, hoping to get on top of that Azir to finish the kill. Instead, uh, is it out of range, probably for the better, and they get this free Baron. Absolutely. Um, the reset here as well with the empowered recall here. Absolutely nothing that Pink Banana can do about this now. And that Fiora is going to be able to take a lane and be able to say, Nope, this is mine, give me your towers. Exactly. I mean, now Sivir's starting to get into those items. And if she just gets a little bit of peel, a ton of damage gets down. And then... 5v5 situation, even though the the Rakan and the Nunu and the Heavy engage, that this Mordekaiser just, whoever he pulls out might lose to. That's the thing how I'm starting to recognize with the Mordekaiser. If he gets behind, he can become very, very squishy. Absolutely. As you see, we only have the Rylai's completed here for him. Uh, and definitely interesting target choice. He does keep pulling the Fiora out of fights. I think the call there is to see if they can win the 4v4 without 
the Fiora and just hope that Rick, uh, the Mordekaiser can live long enough to deal with that. I would much rather see him pull the Twisted Fate out or the, the um, Lee Sin, somebody who he actually has a chance of potentially uh, winning in that duel so that he can come back and make it a 5v4. Mm -hmm. No, I think you're very, very right there. But uh, I think a simple 1-3-1, we see that the alt is up for TF and teleport is coming up very shortly. A simple... 1-3-1 here with the Baron buff and just continue to walk it down. They're going to have to send more than one to deal with this Fiora. Oh, they absolutely. Open up the map. Uh, we see that tower shot hitting her and absolutely nothing. That's the Azir wall coming through, but the minion's not quite there for Azir to be able to continue on. And by minions, I mean his minions, the Shreema Warriors. And that's going to be uh, Mordekaiser are going down regardless of his tower being there or not. Continuing to see those soldiers coming out, doing a decent amount of damage to Haas. Lee Sin's right there, so he's not too, too worried. Uh, just trying to keep these minions here. Noon is going down to deal with the Sphere and decides the better of it to try to defend this mid tower from the Nautilus and the uh, Shiver. That's going to be the kick to be able to interrupt the uh, dash. Uh, did not interrupt it as it started, but prevented its initial cast. So it's going to be a zero managing to still get away safely. Rakan coming in, ultimate, that's going to be the stun, charm, still going to land, Haas is going to be able to dump over the wall there with a the flash. Yeah, we're starting to see that this Fiora is just too terrifying, it seems like, for a pink banana to deal with, and she just gets to walk around for free at this point. Yeah, it'll be interesting to see what happens here, Fiora is caught up by three people here, Nunu and Khan, and she just walks away, just decides, nah, not today, and walks right out. That's going to be mid tower falling on the backside of that to Silver Nautilus. And uh, Mordecai is just left alone once more. Without a tower to back him up this time, too. Uh, all right. We'll see how that goes for him. We, we've yeah, seen this a number of times in the lane where how we expect this to go. Um, with a tower behind him. Oh, Nautilus is going to get this red buff uh, for that stun uh, into the burn there. Definitely intentional. Definitely better on Nautilus. You know what? It's worth. It's all part of the plan. Absolutely. If you decided decide they're going to take yet another dragon... Um, Nautilus and Silver getting that memo a little bit later than the rest of the team, it looks like, but they are going for this Ocean Drake now. Uh, TF is coming back as well, uh, from a buy, it looks like, as well. Yep, I'd like to see Fiora in this top wave continue to pressure those outer turrets. Probably even throw four guys mid, possibly four of them towards the in-hit to take it for free, but you don't want to force something too much without this Fiora. Even though the rest of the team is very strong, she's definitely the hyper win condition at this point, just for how... Three and a half items deep she is. She's very, very strong at 9-0. and oh, And slowly just take control of this game. Keep the deep vision score up. Absolutely. And safe to close out this game. Looking across the gold here, uh, Fiora is at 13,000 gold. The, the closest on the team of his team name here would be the uh, Twisted Fate at 11,000. The closest on the other team is actually the Azir at 9,000. So not very many people here who have even close to the stats that Fiora does. Yeah, you can definitely tell it is six turrets to a whole zero in favor of insert team name here. They're playing very well across the board. Uh, even though the kills are only up 16 to 7 and the dragons are about even, uh, CS is across the board in favorable of insert team name here. But just those objectives and the constant push and the cash in on the big plates early in the game started to snowball this league. Absolutely. And we saw Sivir there taking the other red buff. The handoff to the Nautilus was absolutely intentional. They wanted to have it on two different players. So that's going to be TF caught out of position. The ultimate, the catch, that's going to be four onto him. That's going to be him dead and absolutely no problem. Yep, quick secure to kill four pink bananas on top of that TF, but they're going to have to sacrifice things on the other side of the map. And no. the answer team member here needs to capitalize. They really shouldn't be too scared of this Azir. No, they shouldn't be. Uh, it looks like the Nautilus and the Silver decided because there's no minions, they're just not going to do it. Uh, it looks like Tulligan, however, has different ideas, and it's like, no, I want this tower, give it to me. Uh, but that's let the rest of the team, Pink Bananas, re recover, and they're moving their way in. Uh, we do see the Azure coming back into the tower here with the Nuno. Uh, and the rest of Ancient Name here has had to back off, actually. I would have liked to see maybe the all Oh, Lee Sin is going to be caught out. That's going to be the flash into the Blast Cone. He's going to manage to get out back to the, the uh, Pink Ward as well. No, I would have liked to see the all in from the Nautilus on top of the Azir and followed up with the uh oh, followed up with the dredge line and the auto passive to lock him down and eventually give a lot of free damage either from the TF, the Sivir, the Fiora, whoever was behind him holding his hand, and then take the turret for free, but 
The other call might have been... been, this Baron is coming up in 20 seconds now. They might have decided not to go in for it. That's going to be the Rakan going, and the Flash coming up from Nautilus. That's going to be the ball coming in from Nuno, not going to connect with anybody. Fiora's in that top lane. Uh, this was definitely their time to go, but uh, they didn't land it, so it looks like they're going to back off. Ooh, you are definitely right. That could have been a very successful closing all-in opportunity, but Rakan did not have that alt, so that's something they definitely want if they're trying to find a full-on pick on more than a single target. Yeah, and it looks like they uh, didn't know where the TF was, and uh, Fiora had probably just shown top set as well, so they were worried about who was behind them there as well. And as I mentioned, the Baron spawning, they are going for it right away. TF is continuing to push that bot lane. Would be almost nice to see him go right for that inhibitor and just say, well, you're going to lose one of these two. Pick one. That's Fiora going right in under the Rakan. That's going to be the ultimate coming in. That's Fiora brought very, very low. That's going to be her shut down. Not unless it's the stun under the Nunu. Can you least continue to jump around? Ultimate charging from Nunu. That's a double kill coming in for the Zaya. That's going to be the triple. That's going to be a turnaround here, it looks like, for Pink Bananas. The power of the Zaya Rakan, as you've been mentioning, coming through. That's going to be the TF pulled into the uh, solo world. But drop back out, and that's Azir doing what Azir does best, which is throw sh soldiers at your face and decimate you. And that's going to be Baron giving over to Pink Bananas. Is this the throw? Is this the turnaround that Pink Bananas needed, CJ? This is definitely something they really wanted. Getting on top of the... Uh... Fiora and getting her out of the fight very, very fast made it very easy for them to get in some big shutdowns on top of their carries. Zai's not going to be able to cash in a ton of money here. So she's looking to kind of get very close to this. She picks up a full rapid fire cannon. She's now very, very strong with the Essence, uh, Essence IE rapid fire. She really didn't have the insane attack speed that she typically does getting the first credit on, but the Lethal Temple helped her out with that. But no, you're definitely right, Art. That was a huge turnaround here for the Pink Bananas. I'm going to see Shamrock moving around to get that vision down. That's Lee Sin being able to spot him, but not going to be able to go in because Zaya on the backside there is going to be a pick ward. Uh, most interesting pick so far this game. Mm-hmm. You know, I definitely think just the wave clear, but they got to respect that they did lose that last fight. 5v5, or 5v4, TF did TP, and a little later... And uh, possibly communicate it, but this Baron boss can be able to start taking some objectives here for the Pink Bananas. Yeah, we do see Fiora pushing in that top lane. He's going to be able to protect at least one tower here. TF's doing the same on bot uh, in mid lane here. So the 131 coming up from Team Insert Name here is going to be able to help mitigate a lot of the damage potential from uh, the Baron buff as well. Uh, have not yet managed to break open any of the towers, despite them all being outers. Rather simple, usually, to be able to take once you have that Baron buff. Mm hmm. Regardless that that Fiora did fall in that last fight, she is still 9-1, still 4 items deep in comparison to her lane counterpart who is 2, and she still needs to be significantly respected. I'd like to see that the Pink Bananas kind of play around the Zaya, play around the Azir, who are now getting into their 3.5 item spikes, and seriously start to pack a punch. Absolutely. Now, this is zero. We don't see a stinger even still. Uh, that's going to be the mid lane tower finally going down, but that's the uh, Cloud Drake going over to Team Insert Name here again uh, for free, no contestion. Um, it would have been nice to see them rotate bot potentially to try to get the pick off. No, they're going to try to go mid, but that's already too late and they're uh, getting out rotated here as Pink Bananas is heading topside. Mm hmm. Yeah, I feel like they're just thinking it's. Just giving away these outers for uncontested things. The cloud was a good pickup, but uh, not necessarily optimized. Could have kept someone mid. I don't think they needed the full squad, and now they're losing stuff on the top side of the map. A little slow to the rotation game. This is what Pink Bananas used to do. Slowly inch their way back into the game. We see that they were had a big, big deficit. Now they're slowly closing in. Only at about a 7k difference at this point. Yeah. Uh, now that being said, again, the 131 is still managing to do a decent well. TF is managing to defend this bot tower despite it being one of the lowest ones uh, before this Baron buff is taken. Decent amount of damage. A lot of damage actually going down onto this uh, Mordecai here from TF. Recon here now to help out as well. Yeah. The staying power of Twisted Fate. Oh. <laughs> I feel like he lands that yellow card there. Possibly could have bursted this Mordecai down. Very well could have been, um, but no, just going to continue to try to keep this wave off the tower. Uh, accidental pink there, unfortunate, but uh, we don't see a lot more being taken from Pink Bananas, and that should be Baron actually timing out relatively soon. Um, yeah, and it's going to be the force recall for Mordecai, so that's going to be able to be TF, be able to protect this outer. Uh, only two towers going down so far, that's not what you want to be seeing, that's for sure. No, but it's definitely in the favor of Pink Banana. Slowly inch their way back into this. It's things they need to do. Take what they can. Don't try and overgreed too much. 
Um, but if another fight like that happens, that happened at that Baron Pit, they could very much so just walk it down mid and end this game. Yeah. Between uh, the Azir turret take and the Zaya. Yeah, now we do see Fiora managing to go and demand another tower. Uh, not going to get it because of the lack of minions here. And now the follow up from Pink Bananas should make it difficult. Uh, Silver Nautilus does have the potential to, to pressure mid here, though. Uh, but it looks like they're going to just continue to be on wave pressure duty like TF was in bot lane here. And uh, I don't think we're going to see too, too much more action until we get either of the major objectives coming back up. That's Elder Drake in 2 minutes and 40 seconds and Baron in a minute 40. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Nope, these things are definitely starting to uh, come back up. We're getting to the later phases of the game, so death timers are starting to... Uh... Take a toll. The gray screen's going to stick around for a little bit here. That's going to uh... be the pull in onto the TF, into the, the fighting realm. But that's not quite how much damage Mordekaiser was hoping to be able to take in there. That's going to be the pull back out. Flash from TF, but in the wrong direction, that's going to be Ignite. That's going to be TF going down. Uh, there, just the, the instant uh, collapse there from uh, the pink banana. It's not really necessarily needed, but uh, TF may be underestimating the Mordekaiser and if that guy keeps getting kills, he's going to start becoming a little more useful in the game, and it can slowly start to roll the other way, especially having to burn Flash there, but uh, Pink Bananas is definitely not going out without a fight here. No, absolutely. Uh, and despite being down, again, still almost 7,000, they are putting up these fights where they can. Uh, the 131 not necessarily working out as well with the uh, TF on that uh, lone lane here. Mm-hmm. I think maybe... Uh... A rotation to a 1-4 here, let this Fiora kind of be on her own and keep pressing them together, prevent them from being get engaged on with the Silver Wave clear on top of the TF, that it never really should be much of a problem to get shoved in, especially to a Zaya. Oh, that's not what's caught out here on the recall. That's going to be the knock up here from the Recon. Dredge line to be able to get out, not going to be enough. Going to go down here. Uh, poor timing, 10 seconds before Baron's up, and that's going to mean he's not going to get up until 30 seconds after Baron has spawned. Make it this fight of 4v5 in favor of Pink Bananas. Uh, the second Baron will be absolutely pivotal for them to be able to get back into it. And they immediately start it up here. Uh, we see the uh, posturing. Fiora's going in onto Azir. The wall, but doesn't manage to push it too, too far away. The dash away from Azir as well. They're going to continue in onto this uh, Baron pit. It's going to be the uh, plant to be able to see. That's Mordecai's are missing. That's them pulling Lee Shin out. That's Shiver coming in, doing a lot of damage. That's going to be Nuna going down. Uh, sorry, no, Zaya brought rather low. Nuno is going to be able to get the uh, Baron on the back of this, it looks like. That's his year going down to Tulligan. Sever's going to be down here, it looks like, to the Rakan and the Mordecai. So TF's going to continue to chase Nuno, doing a lot of damage. Fiora's coming in as well. She's going to keep going. Uh, trying to get the kill onto the Rakan or the Zaya. Isn't going to be able to get either, it looks like. Mordecai's is doing decent damage. That's her going back onto the Rakan. That's going to be the kill. Zaya pushing a bunch of damage. Mordecai is rather uh, still healthy. Uh, Fiora fighting on. Going to disengage, but let's see if TF is going to be able to help them go in. And no, Fiora's going to continue to go. Besides, no, this is my fight. I'm going to keep pushing in. That's going to be the root. That's going to be Mordecai are going down the shutdown. That's going to be the resurrection on Zaya. All of that damage almost instantly. The pink card, that should be able to be the instant stun as well. The flash, not going to be able to be enough. Shutdown and the ultimate as well from Tulligan. That should be the mid inhibitor tower going down. Absolutely here. Uh, despite getting the Baron buff, all it did is mitigate it and remove it from the field for pink, uh, for our team instant name here. Yeah, this is definitely going to be uh, two inhibs dropping here. And even though they got the Baron here on the side of uh, pink banana, that... Uh... They ended up losing the fight in the long run. This Fiora is just constantly running through their squad. Absolutely. We saw they pushed Azir out, who was a lot of their damage previously in some of the fights that they've done really well in as well for the uh, Zaya on the backside there. Did manage to get Lee Sin, but then didn't have any more targets to look for. Uh, and Sivir doing a decent job of kiting the Mordekaiser and the Rakan, getting a decent amount of damage, but not a whole lot. This is going to be the other Drake. Might feel like a bit of a consolation prize uh, for the first one here, but if they can get it without contestion or with getting a decent pick, not going to be able to land that dredge line on the uh, Rakan there, unfortunately. Yeah, winning that fight at Baron and then turning over to get this Elder Drake and take two inhibitors. Insert team name here. They kind of let the game slip away from them a little bit, but with the big lead that they had built up, they were able to kind of regroup themselves, get things back together, and pull together a really good 5v5 Baron fight. Secure Elder Dragon at the end of everything with the ace, the two inhibitors. This game's in their hands. It's up to them to close this out. 
Absolutely, and they took almost as much as they possibly could have off of that Baron fight. Uh, the only reason they couldn't get anything topside is because there was no wave there for them, and they didn't necessarily have the ability to die of that inner tower either, with the respawn timer starting back up for everybody who went down at the beginning of that fight. Yep, the GA got popped on that Zaya there. She's now working on another crit item to finish out her build. We're starting to see the... Um, <clears throat> The last whisper come through on the Sivir, the QSS from the Mordekaiser. And uh, she's starting to do a ton of damage. TF is now rounding out his build with his full uh, Mercurial Simtar also. And this Lee Sin still continuing to uh, go on the damage department here. But uh, gonna get some action here in the top lane. Yeah, that's gonna be the top adder going down. Uh, decent respect here from Pink Bananas to back off just before it was too late. TF's going to keep moving in, not giving him a lot of respect to Pink Bananas uh, as he goes for that gold card under the Rakan. Does not get punished too, too hard for it. The Super Minions here are making it rather difficult for Pink Bananas to do too, too much. Uh, and we're going to see Demon's name here push in onto the inhibitor top side with TF pushing in on the bot side, trying to get in on those Nexus Towers. Not going to push too, too far. He's learned his mistake already from those times where he's been picked off in that bot lane. Uh, it's going to be top lane. This will be the third inhibitor dropping here as well. So that's the go button. Rakan's gone in. That's going to be the repost being able to stop the charm coming into the Fiora. That's going to be a bunch of damage. That's going to be a raid in onto the Mordecai. So that's going to be the big healing into the back line here that they need. That's going to be uh, Fiora doing a decent amount of damage. Azir wall going to stop a bunch of people. But this is going to be enough. TF's going to be able to get the kill there. The uh, Azir tower does go up. And uh, Lee Sin and... Uh, yes, Lee Sin and Nautilus are the only casualties for Team Insert Name here. Yep, this looks like the game will be coming to a close here in favor of Insert Team Name here. They were able to close out this fight. The Fiora, significantly strong. Absolutely. Uh, without a doubt, the hyper carry here for Team Insert Name here uh, throughout that game. Definitely gets my vote for the MVP.